senior embryologist here at West Coast Fertility for the last 22 years. So what I do here is um, egg retrievals, insemination via ICSI, um, inseminating sperm into the actual eggs themselves, um, biopsying for genetic testing array uh, CGH, embryo transfer, embryo egg and blast freezing, sperm freezing, semen analysis, sperm washes, the whole gamut. I'm about to accompany Chris into the embryology lab to witness her doing a mock egg freezing and thawing procedure. So we do egg freezing here through vitrification, which is almost like a flash freezing of the eggs. We use a vessel here called the vitristraw. And so what it is is just an outer vessel and an inner vessel. So the inner vessel is almost like a spoon shaped where we put the eggs on the tip with a little bit of the media and then they are dunked into liquid nitrogen and then the outer vessel is placed onto the the inner vessel where the egg is frozen. And so the the straws are labeled the patient's name, social security, or if it's an egg donor with their code and the date that they're frozen. As you see, the straw has um, color coded, so we're able to maintain them by the code of the patient or the name of the patient. And if we're going back for thawing, if we're going back for thawing, we can pull out um, by and keep log by the color coding of the ID. So how it's done is through micro droplets of vitrification. So there's three solutions. It's five steps total of um, 16 minutes. So in 16 minutes you can freeze two eggs per straw and then the, the straws are maintained in their own canes, each patient on their own cane. Now with vitrification you have to be very careful to keep the straws under liquid nitrogen because because it is frozen in such a tiny little bit of residue of the media that it can thaw instantaneously. So we and so we have the cane with the patient's name, a goblet that is full of liquid nitrogen. So when we put our, our straw in the goblet, it's always maintained in liquid nitrogen. And then it is stored in one of our many doers. Now these doers have 10 canisters. Each one will hold 16 of these canes. So one patient per cane and 16 patients per canister. Now these are like a thermos, full liquid nitrogen. So they're always submerged in liquid nitrogen. They're maintained daily the level is checked and then maintained twice a week by adding liquid nitrogen to make sure that it never goes below the level of the actual straws themselves. The thawing process is a little bit different. Just as important in the freezing as the thawing process. This is a total of seven steps. So what we would do, we would uh, double check the patient's name versus the patient's being thawed. We double check the straw when we pull it out that it's the proper patient's name, social security, or the egg donor that's being used for the patient. So what will happen is the tip is where the eggs is below the liquid nitrogen. So first solution is to take the outer sleeve off, timing it properly under the first solution. We flush the eggs off of the straw. We move them to a new position in the dish. And then we go stepwise for the other solutions. 
So they range from one minute, two minutes, three minutes. And then after the final solution, we move them to a, a equilibrated culture media dish into the incubator. They're left there for three hours, and then they're inseminated via ICSI. All frozen eggs, either through vitrification or slow freeze, have to be inseminated by ICSI, which is intracytoplasmic sperm injection, where we actually grab a sperm and inject it into each egg. Because the freezing process itself hardens the zona, so if we were just going to add sperm to the eggs in a dish, the sperm would prevent the eggs from entering because the zona has been hardened by the freezing process. And that's the simple steps.